I would like to thank you so much for being here, Chief. And you. you're watching this major act of civil disobedience, shutting down traffic on I-5, disrupting traffic through the downtown area, and the focus on your department. So what's, what are you thinking as you watch that video? Well, I, I, I just wish people would uh, be able to be calm because the last thing I want is other people to get injured while we go through this investigation and get through these times. And uh, walking on the freeway is obviously very dangerous. You released the videos yesterday as an effort to make your department more transparent, but you look at what is clearly a lot of anger right now in the streets, and it's hard to say whether that increased trust at all with your department. Uh, yeah, I, I think it did, uh, and I think it will continue to do that, but this is a this is a tragic event for our entire community. So yes, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot out there that is very emotional. But I have seen some of the conversations change since we've had that video released to the facts of the case as opposed to filling in the facts because there's a void of facts. And so I think that's a positive change. Obviously people are still very angry and we expected them to be still be angry because they still don't have all the answers and just releasing the video doesn't change that. You expected the anger, do you understand it? Yeah, I, I do understand it. I, but again, I, I, I think at some point we have to evolve to where we have a tremendous amount of trust between law enforcement and the community. So people trust that we do a thorough investigation and we'll come to the just outcomes. And clearly we're not there right now because you see what is going on right now, but we will continue to work towards that. So part of the steps you've been taking is full transparency, releasing these types of videos. We know some of the people who are watching right now have not seen this video. So we wanna show you this one critical clip. This is from an officer's body cam. Show me your hands! Stop! Stop! My son, stop. Show me your hands, get in! Show me your hands, get in, get in! Oh. Five, seven, shots fired, stop, take down. Show me your hands! I see your hands! Five seven, he's down, no movement. We're gonna need additional units. So you can see just how quickly that happens. Uh, it was dark, the officers approaching, Stefan Clark on the side of a home um, and unsure of what, what they were coming up on. What do you focus on as the police chief? A lot of people have had a lot of opinions about this video. What do you focus on and what are you looking for? Well, really two things. Um, the first one being this specific incident. Um, was the law followed? Was the policy followed? Did they follow what they were trained? Um, and then after all that's settled, regardless of where that falls, um, what can we learn from this and how do we get better and how do we potentially get to where these sort of things don't happen in the future? Do you have any conclusions on, on either of those points at this, at this juncture? No, because obviously we have a lot more facts to gather. Um, the coroner's report, the autopsy, all those sort of things uh, in addition to others. And so I don't, we don't want to come to conclusions until we have all the facts. But as we gather the facts, we will put them out to the community too. We've already done an update um, a couple of days ago and we released the video the other day. So we will continue to put that out to the community too. So you mentioned you're very well aware that there are a lot of questions that have been raised. So let's walk through some of those. I understand that in this particular case, it's hard to answer, but people are wondering just even in terms of the training and the protocol for your department. So let's start out with the use of force and 20 shots fired. Uh, would that be a typical protocol in a situation like this where they don't know what they're coming up on? Well, there's nothing typical about an officer involved shooting. So everyone is dynamic and everyone is different. So that's part of the investigation we have to look at is 20 shots um, reasonable in this sort of situation. So every situation is different. After what the audio that we saw and heard, um, there comes a point a, a minute or so later where somebody calls to mute the audio. That's as they go in to render aid or to see what the situation is with, with Stefan Clark. I know that you have said you can't speak to that in this case, but there are reasons why they would call for that. What are some of the reasons they may ask the audio to be muted? 
Well, first and foremost, this, the body cameras are relatively new for us. We've had them for about a year. Um, so if this had happened a year ago, we wouldn't even have any of this video. Mm -hmm. And so with anything, we learn as we go along of things that come up that we didn't anticipate. So muting is one of those things that we have to take a look at. One, why did they mute it in this, in this instance? And then two, our training says you can mute it during, if you're talking about tactics, you can mute it if you're talking about personal conversations. And so one of the secondary reviews after we get done with the specific cases, is that appropriate? Should we have that policy? And so as we go through new technology and new um, tools on our belt, we learn things and we have to adjust and modify because anytime there's muting on this camera, it builds suspicion as it has in this case. And that is not healthy for us as, in our relationship with our community. Right, people wondering what did they not want us to Correct. hear. So it might be perfectly fine, but because it's muted, you know, there will always be that suspicion. So um, that's something we have to look at. People are asking whether the officers clearly identified themselves. We hear them saying, hands up, gun, 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 but we don't hear them saying this is the Sacramento Police Department or we are police officers. What's right. the protocol for that? Well, again, everything's dynamic, and so every situation is different. I think in an ideal world, yes, you would always say police, but they were in full uniform and there was a police helicopter overhead. But um, yeah, if you listen to the video, I don't, I don't hear them saying that. There are questions about giving aid to someone who has just been shot by officers. As I watch the video, uh, you hear them continuing to talk to the suspect, uh, unclear as to what they were. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, unclear as to what exactly they, they were dealing with. At what point should they go in and, and help someone who they have just shot? Well, um, they should, we should always go in as soon as we, it's relatively safe in our mind. So that's part of the investigation too, is how long did it take? Was that reasonable? Um, so that's all part of the investigation, some of the things, some of the many things we will look at. I understand you plan to release more video and more audio. What will that show? Well, every, all the video that we have released already is all the video we have on the actual shooting. So we thought it was important to get that out as soon as possible. So there's a lot, there's additional helicopter footage after the shooting. So we started exactly where the helicopter video started and we ended it a couple minutes after the actual shooting. And then there's a lot of other video of responding officers after the fact that come to back up the officers. So um, there's no other video that we have of the actual shooting, but our policy is we release every officer that's involved in the call, and so that's numerous officers, and that, will, that takes us longer, but we wanted to make sure we got the actual incident out as soon as we can. So it will be the responding officers after the fact. Let's talk about before the fact, and the, the initial calls on this was someone breaking into cars and that sort of a call. Uh, how does that end up escalating into officers with their guns drawn and eventually 20 shots fired? Yeah, that's a common uh, misperception is that um, they were shot, he was shot because he was breaking into cars. If an officer shot somebody for breaking into cars, that would definitely not be a justified shooting. They have to have reason at the moment that they felt their life or somebody else's life was in danger to do that. So it's just really what got them on that street was the original call. It, it, it would not be justification to shoot him in the backyard. So we did mention that this is now national news. We just saw you uh, interviewed on NBC Nightly News just before this newscast. Does that add to the pressure as your department is investigating this shooting? Well, I mean, I guess there's a couple of reasons to be on national news and this wouldn't be a positive one for our community. But I, I think anytime we have a tragic event in our community, that if we don't get better, if we don't learn from it and truly get better as a department, as a community, then it stays just a tragic event and that in itself is tragic. And so I think this will all, if we handle this properly and we take real look at ourselves and have true conversation and true look at our policies and training and how we interact, um, this will ultimately result in some positive change. One change that's very specific that the protesters out there right now are calling for is drug testing for officers after an officer involved shooting. Is that something you would consider? That's something I would consider, but there's a whole lot of other people involved in that, but absolutely. I think we should be able to consider anything. Uh, race is certainly being discussed in this. Uh, one of the officers involved in the shooting, black, we have our first black police chief in this city. Uh, how does race factor in in a case like this? 
Well, I think race factors into almost everything in our country, and um, whether it's bias, implicit bias, everything. So I don't know exactly wh how it factors in on this case, but uh, it, it permeates everything in this country. The two officers involved in the shooting now on administrative leave, have you talked to them? I have. And can you relay any part of the conversation or how they're doing, how they're feeling? I think they're doing as well as can be um, considered, um, but I'll leave the conversation we had to us. Did they express regret? Um, I'll leave the conversation to us, but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, just like all of us, wish that there was a different outcome. I mean, like I said earlier, this is a tragic event for sure for the family um, and the friends, but also for our entire community and also for our department. Okay, I only have time for one more question. So really, with so many protesters out in the streets right now, what is your message for the people who are so angry about this shooting? Uh, have patience and let's let's have those conversations but be safe because the last thing we need is anybody getting injured in any of the whether it's on i5 or anything else while we're going through this investigation that would just add more tragedy to this all right chief han thank you so much i know thank transparency you. has been a big issue for you and being here tonight is part of that so we thank, thank you. you thank you for having me